Hello, Katrina Bullock for the Finance News Network. And joining me today from the Tribeca Partners Fund is Portfolio Manager David Alward. David, welcome to FNN. Thank you. Now, first up, could we start with an introduction to the fund? The fund's set up in a very opportunistic way to exploit the round of recapitalizations that are taking place at the moment that have really flowed off the back of the, uh, of the, the COVID crisis that we're going through. And so uh, it's a Aussie unlisted fund uh, that we've, we've established uh, with a long short structure uh, to uh, really hone in on the very stock specific nature of those transactions rather than necessarily carrying uh, much equity risk. So it's necessarily a very capacity constrained fund. We've said uh, that we're only raising $20 million for this fund and, uh, and we're you know, a fair way towards that at the moment. So the investment approach looks to exploit the fact that Tribeca has been a business uh, operating in the market here in Australia for 22 years. Uh, we have deep relationships with the corporates, with the investment banks and so to that end we get pretty good access to deals as they come through. So, so what we've decided with this fund is that we'll take a very deal by deal approach. So we look at the deal, uh, say well what's the narrative around that deal, what was the problem that you're going to fix with this capital raise, does that narrative hang together and with that we basically we construct a, 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 a forecast internal rate of return out of the transaction, uh, get to work on accessing as much of it as we can and exploit it and, and take a view that is, that is going in, we've pretty much got our our exit sort of focus, which is different to what we do across most of our business, where we're far more strategic in our investing. And that's one of the reasons why this fund can only be very small, is uh, you know that we want that to remain our focus. But in this particular instance, we're taking that far more sort of tactical approach. And what are some of the fund's key holdings and how are you choosing them? Some of the trades that have been big in the, in the, uh, in, in the portfolio over the last uh, two months. Uh, been Unity Wireless was one where um, they uh, uh, executed on acquisition of uh, Opticom and uh, we have known that company for a long time. We took the opportunity there to both uh, go into the placement, we're a substantial sub-underwriter of the deal there and that one's thankfully worked, uh, worked really well for us. Uh, the Qantas trade was uh, an uh, interesting one for us. I mean, again, sort of looking at the way these trades come together. What, what's the identified problem? What's the narrative around the solution? And, and how quickly does that play out? So Qantas clearly has got some, uh, some, some you know, real challenges to face through, uh, through you know, no fault of their own. Uh, but sort of with that, and I think with their placement, I felt like they did a very good job of bringing forward uh, some you know, sort of uh, regeneration of their business model and, and the narrative around that, around this kind of once in a, in a, in a generation opportunity to make changes to their business. That seemed very appealing to us. Then the other one um, that that sort of you know springs to mind was um, uh, Super Retail Group. So uh, that was one where, as we identified that stock, we liked the company a lot, like their, their, their platform of businesses, we liked the team there. Uh, probably we identified that as being at the higher end relative to its peers in terms of its leverage. And uh, you know, so that's sort of an example of, they're all very stock specific. Uh, they're all very much focused on, yeah, what's the opportunity here around, uh, what's the problem you've identified, what's the solution, and uh, you know, to, to what extent does that equity raise meet that, 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 that problem, uh, then you know, there lies your return. And what about the performance of the fund? In June, I think we did net, we did just under 10%, I think about 9.9%. Uh, I know gross this month, we're up about sort of 6.5%. So gross, we've done about 19%, I think, over the last you know, month, well, almost two months now. So off to a good start, and that's across, um, I think we've done about sort of 20 individual transactions. So these capital raisings, these discounts obviously represent a large market opportunity. How long do you expect that market opportunity to last and what will happen to the fund as it dries up? The fund is, is purely there for this purpose. We've got other funds in our business that have other more strategic views around how to make money through cycles and the like. This one is purely about this cycle. And so I think you know, as, as, as a best guess, we've sort of factored on the, on, on the view that it'll be about a 12 month cycle. Uh, I think if it extends a lot more than that, it will probably mean that we've sort of gone into the, the second round of raisings, which is kind of 
going to be a bit of a disappointment in a way in that um, that'll mean that uh, you know equity markets are still pretty challenged and uh, and that probably that COVID you know is continuing to uh, to play havoc with people's business models so uh, I kind of hope that that's not the outcome actually uh, I'd rather that uh, within that sort of 12 18 months time frame deals dry up We'll just wrap up the fund and you know, a lot of the purpose about this fund to us is frankly to write to all those clients who have hopefully had a great experience and say why don't you you know stick with us in this capacity or whatever but essentially we'll give the money back and david before we let you go what's the key message you want to leave investors with and how can they find out more about the fund yeah i guess uh the key messages are i think there is a you know, an opportunity that's going to persist here for a while uh on the back of uh you know the events that are around the world and that recapitalization cycle in terms of uh, uh getting involved um i think our website's probably the best place to go to uh and uh and you know, I guess talk to your advisor or whatever who, who can probably uh, put you in touch with us as well. David Alwood, thank you so much for your time today and for the introduction to the fund and good luck. Thank you very much.